Namaste and welcome once again to the course on Introduction to Basic Spoken Sanskrit. In our previous session, we had looked at the conjugation in the future tense. So, in this lecture, which is lecture number 12, we will look at the past tense and some more verbs. The objectives of this particular session is, firstly, we will revise a little bit of the different time periods we had looked at in our previous session. Then, I will teach you a few more verbs. And then we learn how to conjugate the oft used verbs in simplified past form as well as in the formal past tense. So, I will explain to you what I mean by the simplified past form when we come to it. And then I would like to introduce you to a few uh, words like uh, thus which is iti or like which is vat or an emphatic word for like alone which is eva. So, quickly going over the weekdays, do you remember them? Monday was? Somavaraha, Tuesday, Mangalavaraha, Wednesday, Budhavaraha, uh, Thursday, Guruvaraha or Brihaspativaraha, Friday, Shukravaraha, Saturday, Shanivaraha and Sunday, Ravivaraha or Bhanuvaraha. Let us have a look at it once. Let us say together Somavaraha, Mangalavaraha, Budhavaraha, Guruvaraha or Brihaspativaraha, Shukravaraha, Shanivaraha, Ravivaraha. That is it. Now, we also looked at the different uh, time frames, so adverbs of time. So, in this case, I will introduce to you something more, and that is to conjugate the verb to be in the past, in the present, as well as in the future. We have already seen the verb to be in the present tense which was asti. In the past, it is as you can see on the screen, it is asit. And in the future, it is bhavishyati. For example, um, idanim uh, uh, karyam asti or now there is work or idanim vargaha asti, now there is a class. Hyaha, uh, hyaha um, bahu karyam asit means yesterday there was a lot of work. Hyaha bahu karyam asit. Shwaha pariksha bhavishyati. Shwaha pariksha bhavishyati. Or tomorrow you will have an exam. Now, looking at the words that we had already seen, so hyaha, adya, and shwaha. And then extending it uh, temporally in the past as well as in the future, we get uh, adya. So, starting with today as the reference point, adya, hyaha, parahyaha, and praparahyaha. So, today, yesterday, day before, and the day before, day before yesterday. Great. And then I also have here, if you look at the first word in the second line, it is gata. Gata means past. Okay means so you can say gata ma se means in the last month or gata dine means yesterday that is another way of saying hyaha. Now, let us look at the time in the future. So, we have adya reference today, shwaha tomorrow, parashwaha day after, pra parashwaha day after, day after tomorrow and then we have the word agami which means the next. So, just we had the last gata, we have the next which is Agami. And I have tried to incorporate into the question here. So, uh, you just have to try and follow the scheme here. So, I have Adya Kim Dinam Asti. Adya Kim Dinam Asti. It is the first one. So, Adya Kim Dinam Asti. So, let us think today is uh, Friday. Adya Shukravasaraha or Shukravaraha Asti. Shwaha Kim Dinam Bhavishyati. Shwaha kim dinam bhavishyati. Shwaha shanivaraha bhavishyati. Shwaha shanivaraha bhavishyati. So, one thing the uh, future can be also be simplified and used, uh, we can use the present tense to denote the future. So, you can also say shwaha shanivaraha asti, and technically it would serve the purpose of communication. So, the future is sometimes substituted with the present tense as well, okay, just for your general knowledge on that. And then we have the next question, 
ह्यह किम दिनम आसीत ह्यह किम दिनम आसीत और अनादर वर्ड अभवत किम दिनम अभवत विच डे वेंट बाय यस्टरडे सो ह्यह गुरुवार आसीत ह्यह गुरुवार आसीत the abhavat uh, tends to go more with an event that has happened it's not so much with the days and all so hyaha kim kim abhavat hyaha varge in the class kim kim abhavat or for example gata satre satram means the uh, the session so gata satre kim kim abhavat in the last session what all happened सो गत सत्रे भविष्य कालस्य पठनम अभवत गत सत्रे भविष्य कालस्य पठनम अभवत देर वॉज अ स्टडी ऑफ द फ्यूचर टेंस और राइट सो जस्ट टू गिव यू अ फील ऑफ हाउ द वर्ब टू बी इज इज कॉन्जुगेटेड इन द थ्री टाइम स्केल्स सो नेक्स्ट वी विल लुक एट द पास्ट फॉर्म Uh, which will be in the first second for the first second person formal informal as well as the third persons and we'll look at it in the masculine feminine singular plural and see whether all of these factors influence the way in which the verb is conjugated now here i have written out bhutakala and langlakara which is the technical name for the past tense in the formal context but what we are going to look at right now is not so much the formal tense which i will introduce to you but uh, in order to make your life simple i propose that i teach you a form which is the simplified past form okay so it goes like this you would say kim kritavan so if there's a man you would say kim kritavan let's get piyush on screen and just see how it goes namaste namaste sarvam kushalam am sarvam kushalam uttamam तर्हि अद्य भवान् किम् कृतवान् अहम् अद्य प्रातः पठितवान् पठितवान् सो व्हेन ही सेस ही सेस पठितवान् नाउ यू आस्क मी द क्वेश्चन भवति किम् कृतवति अद्य भवति किम् कृतवति अद्य अहम् क्रीडाम् क्रीडितवति अहम् क्रीडाम क्रीडितवती आई प्लेड अ गेम अस्तु नाउ यू कैन यूज दिस फॉर दिस यू फॉर्मल लाइक आई हैव सेड भवान और भवान किम कृतवान एंड ही आस्क्स मी भवती किम कृतवती राइट नाउ सो टर्न राउंड अ बिट हाँ नाउ आई विल आई कैन प्रेजेंट दिस इन अ डिफरेंट वे यूजिंग द थर्ड पर्सन सिंगुलर सो आई वुड से पीयूषा और ए प्रातः पठितवान सो इसी वे यूजिंग द थर्ड पर्सन एंड वे यूजिंग द सेम काइंड ऑफ कॉन्जुगेशन सो एष पठितवान एष पठितवान एंड नाउ ही वुड शो मी एंड से एषा पठित और क्रीडित वती से दैट एषा क्रीडित वती अगेन एषा क्रीडित वती उत्तम सो when he is indicating me as a third person a lady he will say esha kridita vati and now when we say aham ha huh? that's the first person aham kim krita vati is what i would say aham kridita vati aham kridita vati and now if i had to ask him the informal uh, twam i would say twam kim kritavan adya अहम् लिखितवान् ओ अद्य एषः लिखितवान् सो डिड यू गेट दैट नाउ व्हाट वी हैव नोटिस्ड धन्यवाद धन्यवाद इज दैट वेदर इट इज अ मैस्कुलिन इन द सेकंड फर्स्ट पर्सन सेकंड पर्सन फॉर्मल इनफॉर्मल और इट इज इन द थर्ड पर्सन व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द मैस्कुलिन केस दिस सिंपलीफाइड पास्ट टेंस फॉर्म ऑलवेज बिकम्स gatavan or khaditavan now uh, what you need to understand is that the form gata is the past participle of the verb to go huh? so gachati in the past participle becomes gata and gatavan means 
have gone. One who possesses this gone. So gatavan is a simple way of saying I went. Alright. It's simple because no matter what the person is or who the person is, you can still apply the same conjugated form or the same form of the verb. So sahagatavan, bhavan gatavan, uh, twam gatavan, and aham gatavan for a man. In the case of a lady, just like we have bhavan and bhavati, in the case of the lady, it becomes sa gatavati, twam gatavati, bhavati gatavati, and aham gatavati. So it stays the same, which really simplifies the applicational aspect of uh, wanting to talk about the past tense. So in the in the singular, it doesn't make a difference, no matter who the person is, except for the masculine or the feminine. Let's look at that. So just what we have seen, saha bhavan twam aham gachati, uh, but then it becomes gatavan. Huh? So goes, I have kept just kept the present tense for the third person here. So it's not because it's not aham gachati. Okay, it's not in that case. I have just kept the gachati form to show you the transformation it undergoes. So, saha bhavan twam aham gatavan. Similarly, if it is in a female case, it becomes sa bhavati twam aham gatavati. Now, moving on, let us look at a few other verbs here. So, uh, pathati becomes pathitavan or pathitavati. Likhati likhitavan or likhitavati pibati pitavan huh? or pitavati as you can see there Khaditava, khadati becomes khaditavan or khaditavati vadati becomes uktavan or uktavati kridati becomes kriditavan kriditavati upavishati becomes Upavishtavan, Upavishtavati, Uttishthati, Uttitavan or Uttitavati. So look at this uh, table more when you have time and see if you can familiarize yourself with this usage. But mind you, this is really all in the simplified past form. All right. Now, uh, since this is a basic spoken Sanskrit class, I thought it would also be a good idea to introduce you to the formal past tense, which is also known as the lang lakaraha. Okay, that's the technical name for it. Don't don't worry your heads about it. It's just good to know it. So uh, we have here the verb. So we have uh, for saha karoti becomes kritavan or kritavati. As you can see in the middle column, all of them are the same, and then. In the past tense, huh, the actual past tense, it becomes akarot. Saha, ak, saha kim akarot? And the answer is saha agachat. So gachati becomes agachat. Huh? Now, just one thing you would notice is that we put an extra a and the t at the end. So I've, in the uh, English transliteration, the color scheme is more correct. But you have to put the a uh and the t at the end. So the a uh indicates it has happened. All right. Now similarly, twam karoshi. Simplified Sanskrit, it stays twam kritavan or kritavati. But in the proper past tense, it becomes twam akaroho. Means you have done. You informal have done. Twam kim akaroho. Twam agachaha. Means you went. Again, the uh, attention drawn on the visarga, huh, the aspirated sound. Twam agachaha. All right. Moving on. Uh, so, if uh, I'll just give you an example. Supposing you say, aham, uh, or rather, twam khadasi would become twam akhadaha. Twam pibasi, twam apibaha. Twam likasi, twam alikaha. Uttamam, just to give you a hang of it. But to simplify your life, you can really stick to the second column of Likhitavati and Likhitavan, etc. Okay, now moving on. When you talk of the first person, so it is Aham Karomi, 
और अहम कृतवान कृतवती एंड द क्वेश्चन इज किम अकारवाम वट डिड यू डू एंड देन द आंसर अहम कच्छा मी बट फॉर द पास्ट टेंस द आंसर वुड बी अहम अगछम अहम अगछम और राइट सो लेट्स डू अ फ्यू वर्ब्स जस्ट लाइक दैट सो अहम अगछम अहम लिखती वुड बी नाउ अहम लिखा मी अहम अलिखम अहम पठा मी अहम अपठम अहम वदा मी अहम अवदम उत्तम सो आई वॉन्ट टू ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट यू दिस पास्ट फॉर्म बिकॉज इन लिटरेचर यू आर मोर लाइकली टू कम अक्रॉस दिस फॉर्म रैदर दैन द गतवान एंड गतवती फॉर्म्स ऑफ द वर्ब दैट इज वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर कम्युनिकेशन एज आई सेड नाउ लुकिंग एट द पा एट द प्लूरल वॉट हैपन्स सो वी हैव सह बिकमिंग ते एंड देन वी हैव भवान बिकमिंग भवंत सो कुंती किम कुंती आई स्टिक टू द क्वेश्चन किम कुंती एंड इन द प्रेजेंट टेंस ते गच्छती फॉर कम्युनिकेशन संस्कृत किम कृतवंत वट डि दे डू और किम कृतवत्य एंड द आंसर ते गतवंत ते गतवंत और ते गतवत्य great now moving on to the regular past so we say te kim akurvan te kim akurvan and the answer is te agachhan te agachhan or bhavan bhavantah agachhan do we practice that some so te uh, so khadanti becomes te अखादन पिबती ते अपिबन वदति अवदन उत्तम लिखती अलिखन उत्तम नाउ गोइंग ऑन टू द सेकेंड पर्सन इन फॉर्मल इट इज किम कुरुथ इन द प्रेजेंट टेंस किम कुरुथ आंसर गच्छथ यूयम गच्छथ नाउ इन द पास्ट टेंस इट वुड बी किम कृतवंत और टू ग्रुप ऑफ लेडीज किम कृतवत्य ह्य किम कृतवत्य एंड द आंसर इज और अदर दे वुड से गतवंत कुत्र गतवंत वेर डिड यू गो गतवंत और फॉर द फेमिन गतवत्य गतवत्य सो इट डजेंट रियली चेंज देर नाउ इफ द क्वेश्चन हियर इज इन द सिंपल पास्ट इट बिकम्स किम akurut kim akurut and the and you can also say agachhat you yam agachhat got that so apathat kim apat kim ap akurut and the answer for reading would be apathat likhati would be alikhat uttamam moving on to the first person we see now so it is kurmah vayam kurmah vayam kim kurmah what do we do the answer in the present vayam kachamah vayam kachamah now the question in the past tense kim kritavantah kim kritavantah or kim kritavatyah the answer would be vayam gatavantah vayam gatavantah or vayam gatavatyah coming on to the uh, formal past tense kim akurma vayam hyah kim akurma and the answer is vayam hyah agachama so uh, if you can see it on the screen clearly vayam hyah agachama okay so just in terms of a color uh, color scheme that agachama you can mark that in blue in a different color so you know that it is a uh, that's the part that gets added okay now just to put that together so this is a, f- a few new verbs that i'd like to teach you so bhavati in the future uh, or bhavati in the imperative becomes bhavatu in the future it is bhavishyati and in the past abhavat okay so in this case we haven't done the bhutavan or something like that we've just kept it as abhavat so adya bhavati 
bhavatu just to say okay let it happen shvaha bhavishyati yaha abhavat naya or nayati to take nayati becomes neshyati or nitavan nitavati in the for the, or, or and then the imperative becomes nayatu take it so here i've actually tried to do some shortcut and put nayati and nayatu together as you can see ha huh? because what i also wanted to indicate to you is that the transformation between the present tense and the imperative is literally the t becoming the tu all right and you can see that the t recurs in the present in the future tense and then it changes uh, after that the next verb pashyati or for a request would be pashyatu shvaha drakshyati hyaha drishtavan or drishtavati next patati to fall patati now when you say don't fall so ma patatu tomorrow patishyati shvaha patishyati hyaha patitavan milati to meet the uh, imperative is milatu shvaha melishyati hyaha militavan or militavati tyajati in imperative is tyajatu future shvaha tyakshyati past tense hyaha tyaktavan or tyaktavati karoti or karotu becomes shvaha karishyati hyaha kritavan or kritavati khad khadati becomes khadatu and khadishyati or hya khaditavan janati to know becomes janatu in the future shvaha jnasyati jnasyati and in the past jnatavan and for a lady hya jnatavati i just like to draw your attention on the pronunciation of this jnya uh, when you're writing in some sanskrit it's a combination of j and nya so i normally recommend that in order to be precise with the sound you quickly run over the j sound in your mouth so jnya jnasyati got that now the next verb is shrinoti which is to hear so shrinoti uh, for uh, imperative shrinotu shvaha shroshyati shvaha shroshyati hyaha shutavan lady shutavati another important verb dadati dadati respect dadatu dadatu shvaha dasyati dasyati hyaha dattavan and a lady dattavati okay the last one we need to see it on the screen so uh, send is preshayati an order or a request preshayatu tomorrow shwaha preshayishyati okay make sure you have that rhythm of that word preshayishyati and in the past tense hyaha preshitavan or preshitavati so those were the verbs i think i will uh, uh, just call piyush up once more and just give you a brief demo of just a, little, a few sentences in that line so uh, piyush ha gata mase bhavan mitrani cha kutra gatavantaha gata mase aham mama mitrani cha kolikatam gatavantaha uttamam tatra kim kritavantaha tatra bayam likhitavantaha पठितवंतः च उत्तम अस्तु भवान यह परीक्षार्थं पठितवान् किम आम अहम् पठितवान् परीक्षार्थं यह उत्तमम् अस्तु सो दिस इज जस्ट टू गिव यू एन आइडिया ऑफ हाउ वी कैन यूज सम ऑफ द वर्ब्स दैट वी हैव लुक्ड एट एंड आल्सो हाउ यू कैन अप्लाई इट इन कन्वर्सेशन ओके सो मूविंग ऑन 
I would like to just close by, I mean I would like to just uh, introduce these few words and then we will come to the close of this session shortly. So, uh, I wanted to introduce you to this term known as itti which is thus and how is it used? Uh, when you are quoting somebody or quoting from somewhere, then you would say something like satyam eva jayate nanritam itti mundakopanishad vakyam. So, Satyam Eva Jayate is the motto of our country of, the, of India and uh, it actually is a part of a statement that comes from the Mundaka Upanishad where the whole form is Satyam Eva Jayate, truth alone wins, Nan Ritam, not the not right. So, anything that is not right will never win, truth alone wins finally. So, it says Satyam Eva Jayate Nanritam Iti Mundakopanishad Vakyam. Got that? So, try and make a sentence with Iti uh, Arise, awake, and stop not till you reach your goal. Iti Swami Vivekananda Uktavan. Alright. So, here we also have another statement of the same kind. We have All life is yoga. Iti Shri Aravinda Maharshayaha Uktavantaha. So, I wanted to just present this case because I have put Shri Aurobindo Maharshihi or I have put him in the plural here. When you want to show a respect, then you can put them in the plural form. And then, of course, the verb becomes Uktavantaha. So, all life is yoga. Iti Shri Aravinda Maharshayaha Uktavantaha. I hope you got that. Now, the second term that I would like you to like to introduce to you <coughs> is the vat, which means like, like something. So, here you have a statement, which is quite a true statement actually. Aham matrivat swadishta pakam na karomi. So, matrivat means like my mother. Swadishta pakam means a very tasty food. Na karomi, I do not cook as, uh, as tastily as she does. Okay. So, aham matrivat swadishta pakam na karomi. So, vat uh, bhavan uh, kishor kumar vat gayati kim can be a question. So, do you sing like kishor kumar or bhavati uh, lata mangeshkar eva or vat gayati kim. Huh? So, we look at that and finally, we uh, there is another usage of this vat which is Jeevane Swami Vivekananda Vat Bhavatu. So, be like somebody. Uh, when you are trying to inspire somebody, then you should say, be like that person, do like that person. Though, finally, it is good to be inspired by greatness, no? by great people. So, Jeevane Swami Vivekananda Vat Bhavatu. Be like this giant of a human being that lived on this earth. And uh, as we close here, there is this use of the word eva, which is a word of emphasis. So, we have aham satyam vadami, which means I speak the truth. Now, the word, uh, there are three words in that aham satyam vadami, I speak the truth. Now, the word eva emphasizes the word it follows. So, for example, if you say aham eva satyam vadami, it means I alone or I only speak the truth. Similarly, aham satyam eva vadami, which means I speak the truth alone and nothing else. And finally, aham satyam vadami eva, means I definitely speak the truth. So, when the eva comes at the end of the sentence, it normally is to emphasize that that action is definitely undertaken. So, let us look at it on the screen. So, aham satyam vadami, I speak the truth. Aham eva Satyam vadami, I alone speak the truth. Aham satyam eva vadami, I speak the truth only. Aham satyam vadami eva, I definitely speak the truth. So, would you like to try this an exercise with aham coffee pibami or aham chayam pibami? Try that. Aham chayam pibami. Then aham eva chayam pibami, I alone drink uh, tea. Aham chayam Eva pibami means I drink tea alone, nothing else, no coffee, no uh, milk, nothing. Aham chayam pibami 
ever. No matter what happens, I have to have my cup of tea. <laughs> All right. So let's move on. We'll end with this uh, a subhashita, uh, like we do in every session. So it says, Matrivat paradare shu. So of all the women of other people's wives, matrivat like a mother. Next, para dravyeshu loshtavat. So in the context of other people's wealth, it has to be like uh, iron. So para dravya means other people's wealth. In other people's wealth, loshtavat means like iron. Next, atmavat like for oneself, sarva bhuteshu. So for all people, behave as if it is for yourself. And finally, that's the main place where the verb comes. It says, Yah Pashyati Sah Pandita. One who can see. Uh, so Yah Pashyati means one who sees. Sah Pandita means he is a Pandita or a wise person. Now let's put it again into the, into the uh, Subhashita itself. Yah Matrivat Paradareshu Pashyati. One who sees. Uh, like the mother in other people's wife or rather one who perceives others wife as their mother paradravyeshu loshtavat others wealth like iron atmavat sarvabhuteshu the whole world as oneself yah pashyati sah pandita he is a wise person so I'd like to just say, recite this for you and I request you to join along matrivat Paradareshu, Matrivat Paradareshu, Paradravyeshu Loshtavat, Paradravyeshu Loshtavat, Atmavat Sarvabhuteshu, Sarvabhuteshu, Yaf Pashyati Saf Panditaha, Yaf Pashyati Saf Panditaha. Okay, let's have a look at it on the screen and do it together. So, uh, you can see, I also mentioned Yaf Pashyati. So, that's just a phonetic specificity there that if the Visarga or the aspirated sound is followed by a P, it becomes Yaf Pashyati and Sah Pandita again, Saf Panditaha. Okay. So, let's do that together. Matrivat Paradareshu Paradravyeshu Loshtavat Atma vat sarva bhuteshu Yah pashyati saf panditaha Uttamam. So these are simple subhashitas, but they are known as subhashitas because they really uh, require a lot of contemplation and then application in real life. One who can practice this in his life or in her life will never ever be unhappy. Because there is no envy. Envy is often the source of a lot of misery. So if we can look at this and be content in our own with what we have, uh, that I think is the secret of happiness in many ways. And to close, I'd like to uh, talk about, uh, share with you rather, Arthur Schopenhauer, who's a German philosopher, a quote by him. He says, <coughs> in the whole world, there is no study so beneficial and so elevating as that of the Upanishads. It has been the solace of my life and it will be the solace of my death. They are the product of the highest wisdom. Though we are doing simple uh, spoken Sanskrit, I hope it is giving you a little bit of confidence and a little bit of the grammatic tools required to start probably picking up an Upanishad and taking in the wealth of its knowledge for yourself. Dhanyavadaha.